Who are you? Am I actually on this time? You're on oh, this one. Okay. Hey, I'm Jeremy Tobin. How do you know that, Robert? I know that. But you're in a new place. I'm at a new place. I've joined a startup, um, taking on the digital living room again. Uh, I was lucky enough to get introduced by one of the foremost VCs in the digital living room space, Stuart Alsop, a guy behind TiVo and Sonos, introduced me to Digit, a startup founded a couple of years ago by Max Miofi uh, that's focusing on improving consumers' entertainment experiences. And first we should cover, you know, you've started a lot of consumer electronics companies, your, your firm helped launch a lot of companies that went, went sure. on to win CES award, a lot of CES awards. You have a whole I've, had, I've had I've had a nice nice record, thanks. Um, yeah. So I in ninety nine like yeah in ninety nine I co-founded Mediabolic. We were kind of the Google TV of our time. That company got bought by Macrovision, which now Roby Corp. Uh, in two thousand and four, one of the products I built was a Denon multi room DVR system, which won best of CES that year. Uh, in two thousand and five, by then I joined Sling Media, mm -hmm. VP of products. That's where we first met. And uh, our Slingbox won Best of CS in 2005. Uh, in late 06, I founded Stage 2, which was a consultancy helping all sorts of different consumer tech companies come to market. Um, we brought Bug Labs to market, which, which you remember well, mm -hmm. and um, we're responsible for a lot of the early traction for Boxy. We worked with Voodoo, Clicker, Netgear, Best Buy, EA, and a bunch of other cool consumer brands. In other words, I always call you Mr. <laughs> CES, Mr. <laughs> yeah, that, Mr. Consumer yeah, Electronics. I turn a little red when you say that, but yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's that, what you, you said. Know, who else is, has more experience in the CE industry? Thank you very not, much. Not many people. And we're here to talk about TV, and you're, you're here with uh, your friend. Yeah, right, so, so this is Maxim Yofi. Maxim is the founder of Digit, um, and he's got a great story about how this company got started based on him having a very common problem that I think most people have in their living rooms today. So maybe yeah, and possibly. we can sort of start even keying in on the problems. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, this is like my living room. Yeah, We've exactly. got a bo bunch of boxes. My wife is actually making me take the boxes upstairs and get rid of them, which shows a problem there. Right. And then you have this living room of remotes, and if you have a dog, they're all eaten. <laughs> And if you have kids, you can never find them. <laughs> right. So I can never find my. Yeah. So that's a right there is probably the problem you're working on, right? Yeah, that's right. So uh, not only that, uh, the the number of screens on which you're consuming content is increasing. So yeah. traditionally, it's been the big screen, the, the the television set on which content is consumed. Uh, increasingly, mm -hmm. folks um, <clears throat> are consuming uh, content on on, t on tablets, on uh, laptop computers that they're that they. Uh, hold on their laps as, it, as they're watching TV on their, on their smartphones yep. and their bus ride to work. Uh, and so... Digit and even phones. I, I have people come over to my house all the time and they, you know, they're know they bored with what's on the TV set so they'll pull out their phone start watching YouTube right. or listening to music. Right. exactly. And so, and so um, kind of this increase in the number of screens on which content is consumed only adds to the pain points surrounding fragmentation in the digital living room. And so Digit has something really exciting uh, that solves it all the world's problems, basically. And so I'm going to tell you all about that. So what is, what is it? <laughs> okay. I think so, you have one here, right? Okay, so, um, so we're actually... Um, I'm going to tell you first about the product that we have, and then okay. I'll kind of fill out the story with regards to the larger vision that we have and uh, okay. kind of tie that into the various trends that we see developing in the space. Okay. So the product, as it stands now, is an iOS app that is um, a universal remote control app with an integrated channel guide for every channel provider in the US and Canada, um, as well as uh, a bunch of social features kind of integrated and weaved in throughout the app. Um, and so right, off, right out of the gate, uh, what the, the, value, the value proposition to the consumer is, look, you've got this kind of integration mess at your house. You can toss, you can toss away all of, your, all of these remotes and just use your tablet or uh, your smartphone, which is very likely or increasingly likely to be a device that you already have when you're lounging around. On the does couch. it work on only iPhones or does it work on Android and other phones as uh, well? As of today, it only works on iOS. Okay. Uh, so it depends when the video goes up. Andro yes. Android and iPad are coming soon. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. The video uh, is going up tonight. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you tell me not to. Okay. That's <laughs> right. So one of, one of the problems that we've solved uh, out of the gate fairly well is integrating with the existing install base yeah. of AV equipment. Um, and so, basically, you know, we're, we're kind of we're, we're positioning the company to play in the smart TV space. The fact is, everything, mostly everything, is pretty dumb uh, so far. 
And so the only way to really interact and integrate with existing equipment is through IR. And that is kind of just this huge uh, can of worms that unfortunately we had to open up, you know, and eat raw. <laughs> And so we, I, I think we've done a pretty good job of that. And yeah, so, the sling box has a little IR blaster that hooks on the front of your uh, right. DVR, right? Yes, you, you're not taking that route, are you? I, uh, it's, it's a little different, so I'll, okay. I'll explain it. So what we've done is we've created a, an IR blaster product that is external to the entertainment center. It's external to the, the, the smartphone or the tablet device. It, so this is it, actually. Uh -huh. uh, it's a Bluetooth to IR bridge. And this okay. is what allows our app to integrate with uh, your set-top box, with your TV, with your Blu-ray player, etc. cetera. Uh, so, so unlike Sling, which um, was, was, a, was one good way to handle devices, because the Sling box stayed with your living room rack, the Beacon, as you see on the coffee table here, it's designed to go, whether you have a bookshelf, a coffee table, whatever, it fits in a bit more, you know, naturally, we think, with the living room environment. You're not yeah. taping things onto other things. And because the range of the IR is pretty good, you can have it in the back of your room or, or, or front and center, depending on what you want. All right, so I don't have a table because I have kids. Can I, I can just put it up right next to my equipment, or does sure. it have to have It'll some? It'll go, you can get it really close. I mean, IR, you know, technically you can bounce most remotes off a wall, so you can actually put the beacon in just about anywhere in your room. Um, hmm. I can't promise your kids won't get to it, but, but yeah. still, the IR signal will still work. Okay. So. Okay, so, so one uh, nuance to the strategy is we, we, uh, we're actually a software only company, so we're not, we're not making this. We've partnered up with Griffin that's generally recognized as one of the top three accessory manufacturers, like iPhone, yeah. iOS ex accessory manufacturers. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, we are the software solution for this product, so our uh, brand, our app screenshots are all over this. And so it's a very tightly integrated uh, solution. Right. So there, it's their hardware, it's your software. Exactly. Basically. That's okay. right. So, so the idea is take uh, 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 the best of both worlds, out of the, the hardware world and out of the software world, take a nimble, hungry software startup and uh, get them to work on this. Back to the hardware. It, it, is there a battery in there? Or yeah. how does it's, this uh, work? This is four double A's. Four double A's. And um, how, does, how long does that last? A couple of months. Users? You know, I mean, okay. like everybody's mileage may vary. It's batteries. Uh, but It's just like a remote control probably. It's just right? like a remote control. Okay. And what's also cool is the app keeps track. You can, can find out your battery life. And so um, we can even pop up an alert telling you, hey, you got about three days left and things like that. But I don't need to put any of those weird nope. IR blaster things on the front of the equipment anymore, right? No, nope. not only that, you can even, I mean, you can carry it from room to room if you want and actually have it, we actually have the ability for you to you know multiple rooms. I'm going to be lazier than that. I'm going to buy two of them. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And if all of your viewers do the same, we'll be a very, uh, very, very happy, happy company. <laughs> uh, we should cover how much are these before I promise that I'm going to buy two of these. 80 bucks at retail. That's so not, uh, not very expensive. Not bad. I mean, if and you can my iPhone what... talk to two separate ones or three separate Absolutely. ones? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so I can put one in each room. Sure. And then as I walk around, I, I can choose the bedroom TV or the... Bingo. And we're adding more and more features. I mean, we really, you know, I, we're not really necessarily looking at a whole home entertainment media streaming thing through, through our device, but be able to obviously talk to other devices that do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Fundamentally, we, we believe that the control experience is something that everybody has a pain point around, right? Whether it's because you're dealing with you know, all of this yeah. <laughs> um, or some other hybrid version or just not knowing which one to pick up. One of those things we want to solve is that when you have I a guest of... Them to tell you, it, 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 it's not even getting a, it in your hand. It's, yeah. I can never find them. My kids take them and hide them under the knee, underneath the pile of toys. And well, they're never in the same place uh, and I so on and so forth. My, my, my friends who have dogs, the dogs eat them. Right. You know? So then for, you have to go down me, to Best Buy and get another one. You, know? you see my post. For me, my big thing is I want when I have a visitor, I want them to be able to actually watch TV without having to call me. You know, yeah. when we have a babysitter over. Literally, we have to leave the TV on because otherwise it's, just, it's, it's, a, it's a wreck. Um, so why don't we hop into showing a demo of, of what's yep. actually doing? Because this is all shipping stuff that we're going to show you right now. Awesome. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the things that we're, we're also building for the future. Okay. Because this is really just our, our kind of wedge into the... And mostly this is just to control the boxes that you already have. Right? So, so far. Our, so so well, move the channels, turn off and on devices. Exactly. Do well, volume. Everything that your remote control can do, we can do. But it's through a, through a, a soft interface. In other words, right. it's, it can be changed. And not only that, you can change it. So um, I'll give you an example. Some people really love to use picture-in-picture -picture features. Some people don't. You can have the, all the PIP buttons show up on your version of the remote, 
and my version of the, of the rope for the exact same TV, would, I'd have them hidden away. And that kind of customization flexibility is something that you can never do with a physical button, right? That's, that, that's the power of a soft screen. Can, can I, my wife has an iPhone, I have an iPhone, can she have a different version Absolutely. than I do and it's controlling the same TV set? Absolutely, and when Maxim shows you some of the stuff we can do with your program guide, you can have your favorite 15 channels and she could have her, the average person only watches 12 channels of TV. Yeah. So you could have your lineup, she can have her lineup, you can have your favorite shows, she can have hers, and uh, you're both gonna have to fight for who watches what, because you only have, well, I can't fix your one screen problem. Yeah. But we can fix what you do with the rest of it. I fixed that already, All I right. got two screens. Got two. <laughs> <laughs> and four iPods, <laughs> iPads, <laughs> and, and uh, several iPhones. <laughs> so, so we have this multi-screen problem, I think, <laughs> fixed, but that means t even more remotes. Exactly. Know, even more ways to, view data and view, view content. So. All right, so let's go ahead and launch into, into the demo. So. Clear, just setting the stage really quick. Um, the current, uh, since the video is going up today, right now the app is designed for the iPhone. Our iPad version is coming shortly. Um, so what you're gonna shortly see Shortly being weeks or months? Weeks. Um, okay. we're, uh, we're using an iPad for the demo just because it's easier to see. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so when you first launch the app, as a first time user, we walk you through a fairly brief setup process where we ask you where your content comes from, what pay TV provider you have, whether it's Comcast, DirecTV, etc. Uh, what kind of devices you have in the home, what your television, what your set-top box type is, and so on. So uh, at, at that point, we kind of have a, a very good understanding of what's uh, yeah. in, in your entertainment center. It's really um, easy. It's like a setup wizard. We ask you step-by-step -step questions. Um, you know, something I had a lot of experience with at Sling, but we had a limitation of what we could do in an on-screen. Here, these guys have taken it a step even further. It's a really, really easy setup. Okay. So w once you get <clears throat> once you get past the setup, um, the immediate value proposition is uh, very re readily available. Is that we uh, essentially re replace all of your remote controls. So what you can do is you can go and uh, bring up one of these virtual ones and start doing stuff like turning stuff on. And so just turn the, the Panasonic TV on by pressing a yeah. virtual button in the app. Um, and so and then you can do stuff like uh, everything you can do with a remote control, controlling volume, flipping through channels, etc. Uh, one uh, neat thing about this. Let me see if I can get here so yeah. I can see both. Yep. I'm going to turn the set to box on. So one neat thing about this is um, the fact that because this is a touchscreen interface, it's, we can make it fully customizable. And so um, our thinking behind this is, you know what, there is a lot of frustration around just the complexity of a single remote. Even if you didn't have the, fr the fragmentation problem, yeah. this is already a complicated uh, way to I interface with a device. Yeah, if you pick um, it up, which, which one changes the input on the TV, which one does the volume, and a lot of times the TV volume doesn't work because I have it hooked up to my stereo system, which has its own remote, et cetera, right, et cetera. Right, exactly. So our solution to this is, um, you know, uh, start out with a simple template that captures 95% of the use cases. Yeah. So for a TV, you don't really need much more than turning it on, flipping through channels and adjusting volume, uh, but, if, but, it, but everyone's different, right? And so there's a reason why all these buttons are on here, because every once in a while, like you want to reach and, and uh, do something really obscure. Uh, and so to solve this problem, we made the whole thing fully customizable. Uh -huh. So you can go in, drop into this edit mode, kind of drag things around. Uh -huh. um, okay, hold on a sec. Yeah. So on my remotes, the volume means different things depending on what, what device is playing. Okay. Because if I have my, v, re, uh, my receiver yes. remote, I'm glad that's a master. Okay. Cool. Can I make that? Yeah. Yes. yes, okay. So Can I make that uh, yes. instead of controlling the TV remote, which doesn't work on on my system? Yeah. Can I put that to yeah, my actually, Denon remote? Yeah. Uh, yes and yes. Okay. <laughs> so, so the brief answer is is yes. You you can go ahead and you can drag drag any button from any device on here. So let's say if you wanted to. Uh, uh, let's see. Do you have a receiver button? Uh, actually, we don't. Yeah, we well, don't you have can basically any. pick any of the devices. What Maxim's doing now is he's looking through his other devices. So Got this it. is his Panasonic TV, but the Samsung. You know, if we go to pick device and we say go to the Samsung Blu-ray player, we could just add a play button for some reason to our TV remote, and Got that's it. it. It just sits there. Right. If, if you want to do that, and so, but actually, uh, it actually gets better than. But, uh, it actually gets better than that because for your average user. Uh, we capture the most common combination within the app in a more streamlined manner through this notion of activities. And so essentially, I want to show you how this works. Um, we, we ask you, um, what is the experience you would like to have? Do you want to watch TV? Do you want to listen to music, et cetera? And once you do that, we essentially figure out 
a good placement, a good template for the placement of these buttons. So for instance, uh, in this case, uh, in this setup, the volume goes to the television, and let me right? Show that. Yep. Yeah. There we go. And the channel button goes to the set top box, yep. right? And so, uh, and we set this up in a very streamlined way, such that like your average user doesn't want you know, the power user will spend the twenty minutes tweaking this to death. Yeah. Uh, but the average Joe just wants to spend like five minutes and get going, right? And then enjoy. Now that's so in, in your home, Robert. Yeah. These volume buttons would be your receiver. The power button would be a macro that turned all three things on at the same time. Yeah. And then uh, you might have an input switching button for your TV and a channel switching button for your TiVo or whatever your cable box is. Right. So that's that's what this is. This is the combined view based on the concept that you want to watch TV. We actually want to take the entire concept of one remote or the other out of the product over time. So that it's just about you want to play Xbox, watch Blu-ray, watch Netflix. You pick the activity and build all the features around that. And of course, yeah. we'll still leave you all the buttons. So there's some little tweaky thing you want to do. You've got uh, power user like me. I, I, I know what all these buttons do and what which. Oh, which you can them. You'll, you'll be able to relabel them too. How long does it take a power user like me to set it up? To get to this um, point where it's pretty well know, customized. I mean, that's, that's really a five minutes. A fit, yeah. like, five minutes? Yeah. Really? Yeah, totally. It looks so, harder than that. Yeah. Well, let me show you. I mean, we can, okay. we can talk about the setup process. So uh, okay. part, of, part, of, uh, part of the challenge we're trying to solve is um, making... So because of all the, the, the amount of fragmentation that's, that, that, that's out there, the, the experience is, is very poor. And the only way to solve it is creating something that uh, is uh, aimed at the mainstream. At the, at the mainstream, and you can't solve that without yeah. without making the setup as easy as possible. And so we, we've actually spent a lot of time optimizing that. So we so there's a couple stages. To this one is telling it which devices you have. So you have a Denon remote uh, receiver. You have a a Comcast DVR. You have a, a Blu-ray you know C, uh, d disc player, mm -hmm. and you put that in there. Right. Then you customize the screens to match it with what your what you want as the remote. We, Do, we does it have, save this remote somewhere yeah, into absolutely. the cloud so, so I can yeah, put it actually, on Actually, yeah. I'm glad you asked that so, question. <laughs> yeah. So first, we have some default templates. So the concept of a watch TV screen where there's volume buttons that automatically go to the right device, that's default. We didn't. That was actually, what you saw there was not customized. Oh, really? That was the standard way we approach it. Okay. Your customized version would be to add a sleep button to tell your TV to sleep off to 30 minutes or whatever. Um, you can then create your own complete com combination. So, for example, I have a Blu-ray player that has built-in Voodoo and Netflix. I might make a separate activity called Watch Voodoo because Voodoo's UI requires different buttons than Netflix's UI. And then when I hand that off to my wife or my house guest, they can just intuitively figure out which buttons to push. Oh, really so. cool. So once you get to that stage and you've customized it pretty well and you got it working, does it save it up to the cloud? Does it, it, yes, it, we it, save it for you in the cloud. And at some point down the road, we want to enable some peer features. So maybe you've designed the best Voodoo remote, for example, and you could put, pop that out and let other people copy yours or stylize it or things like that. So, right now, it's just your own profile that goes with you. So if you have two iPhones, you only have to do the work once. So the babysitter comes over uh, and she has an iPhone. Can I just instantly download the app and get her get my customized screen on, back onto it? Either that, or we use the iPod Touch that we have laying around the house. That that too. Yeah. But ultimately, there is this notion of a digital account, and so you can log into it, and all your settings get saved in that, and then you can log out and relog back in with a different identity. Very cool. Yeah. Now so. let's show you something even cooler. All right. All right. So all right. The, the bottom line is we have the control aspect very well nailed. Um, you know, you can download it. You'll you'll try it yourself and see what you think of it all. Um, but we'll just move on to where where else we're taking this whole thing. Okay. Control okay. again is just our starting point for solving these entertainment right. problems. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So not so so the idea behind this is not only do we turn your TV on and get the rest of your components in the right state, we also help you find what what to watch. And so to to start off with, our app comes with an integrated channel guide. Uh, and so as part of the setup process, you you will have already told us where your content comes from, and then we provide uh, a fairly neat. Uh, kind of channel channel lineup for you, so you can go in, browse shows, read about them. Um, once you find something you want to watch, like let's say Days of Days of Our Lives, it's one of Jeremy's favorite uh, soap operas. Don't ruin it, no spoilers, Actually, man. All right, okay. <laughs> Actually, let's see. One of the things while Maxim's going through this, I just you know, actually I think it'd be helpful to just look at some of the UI notions here. Is that we actually have a fundamental philosophy. I mean, I've been doing ten foot UI projects for for over a decade now. We think we've reached kind of the zenith as far as interactivity goes. 
look, the TV guys are making some really cool innovation. Things are looking prettier and prettier every year. You can do more and more. But at the end of the day, you watch how fast and how accurately Maxim can control his program guide by with gestures. Yeah. And it's an experience that you simply can't replicate on no, the 10 foot. I, I got a brand new Comcast DVR and it sucks compared to what I just saw. You know, it, it, first of all, it doesn't have graphics. It doesn't have preview, you know, the, the, the graphics and it doesn't look the same. Um, and it just doesn't let me see uh, what I want. And scrolling through it is really slow, yes. especially if you need. So uh, my kids like Thomas the Tank Engine. That's like a 775. Mm -hmm. And I like uh, CSI. And that's yes. 7705. Right. right. And going up and down is a pain in the butt. You know? yeah, abs um, absolutely. Yeah. And finding something new to watch is a pain in the butt. Especially right. so, why are you do it? Yeah. Sure. So uh, getting back to the demo. Uh, yeah. So once you find found something you want to watch, uh, you just have watch. And then uh, we make, uh, we tune your set of box to the right channel. So Days of Our Lives on, right? So a couple of cool features about, so kind of getting back to what Jeremy was saying about this being a better place for interactivity to take place. Um, we can just search so much better than your Comcast DVR. So let's say you want to watch CNN, uh, just yeah. tap CNN, right? We just yeah. bring that up immediately, uh, tap, oh. and then uh, boom, it's on, it's on TV. Yeah. So you can, yeah, we enable you to search by channel number, uh, ch uh, channel name, show name. Can you search for Thomas Tank Engine or Thomas? Yeah, yeah let's do that. Now just think about what this experience is like on any 10 foot, right? Oh, it's now, there's no, Well, remember, yeah. this is looking at what's on now. This isn't about forever. Uh, okay. So what we will find is stuff that might be coming up down the road that has, these are Thomas, Wait. I can actually so, tell you why the ET wasn't in there. Thomas the Tank. It's Thomas the Train. Okay. Thomas Apparently, Kennedy. you don't watch it with your kids. Uh, I try not to. I don't blame I, you. It's uh, terrible. So it's not, it's, <laughs> hold on. It's Thomas the Train. I'm sure of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can find that on YouTube. Anyway. Yeah. Well, that's one of the features that will be coming soon is we're going to be not, blending the concepts. But it's, since it's not on right yeah. now, yeah. it's not funny. It, or... uh, it also might be this. Um, this is your personalized program guide. So it's very possible that Maxim already said, Maxim doesn't have kids because he's, you know, Younger than us, and uh, he might have already said no kids channels, no uh, maybe no international channels, and no on demand channels because he doesn't want any of those. Um, that's a really key thing is that at the end of the day, you have 500 channels. The average person watches 12, right? right? Plus or minus a bit. So being able to filter out the stuff you don't want, it's kind of the whole signal to noise problem. Um, when this guy is just showing you the channels you opt in for and the shows you actually like to watch, yeah. it's a totally totally different experience. Wow. Um, Okay, so um, actually, so I want to um, segue into something, a different part, part of the, the demo where we show mm -hmm. you guys how we integrate with um, what we call sm smart TV middleware. And so these are, so remember, these are what, what we, so far what we've shown you is how we interface with devices that are dumb, that are not connected. Yeah. And we have to do that with uh, some kind of an NIR bridge or an IR blaster. Yeah. Uh, going forward, the landscape is changing fairly fast. Uh, and increasingly more and more devices are becoming connected and they're uh, connected absolutely. to your home network, as is your tablet, as is your, as is your smartphone. Yeah, absolutely. I'm using this every night to watch a TED video and that's on my tablet. The, the, the TV doesn't have any idea what TED is, right? right? Yes, the, yes, this, exactly. You have a TED right. app or you could go to YouTube.com and watch all sorts of TEDx videos. Uh, those are connected experiences you can't get on your old style yes, TV. Right. Or maybe you can actually, so another p uh, pain point for consumers is that even if you can get that connected content on the other, uh, on the other screen, um, it's, it's, it's fairly painful to go in and recreate the state of what you have here on there, right? Yeah. And no one's really solved this integration uh, puzzle just yet. There's a number of very interesting efforts uh, un underway. Uh, but no, I've got a brand new Vizio TV that's a connected TV and you put your Twitter and your Facebook in there, but it's a, it's not an optimal experience, right? And that's not where you should be using Twitter right. is on your TV. It, you know, it gives you one tweet. It's right. uh, yeah, that's not really optimal. Right. And yeah, you can hook uh, Netflix up to it and YouTube and Hulu and a, a whole bunch of things, but it's not optimal. It, it's better to get those kinds of connected experiences here and then shove them over to the TV. Yes. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, is that where you're moving to? Yeah, sort yeah, of like yes. an airplay <laughs> style thing? Um, so I can't comment too much about on our roadmap. What I can, okay. what I can do is I can show you uh, where we are currently. Well, let's just with, say we, we share a similar vision that at the end of the day, you, sh you shouldn't have to reprogram all your devices. All of your devices should have some level of ways to talk to each other and 
We really believe in the second screen. 70% of TV watching today, you have another device in your hand, whether it's a computer, a phone, or a tablet. So if you're holding that device, you know, it doesn't make sense that you have to do one guy, one app to do your Twitter and another app to do your this, another app. Again, specialization is great, but when it comes to entertainment, you don't want to be searching for stuff, right? Searching yeah. for apps is going to be just as much of a pain as searching for remotes. Yeah, absolutely. What so what do you do today to sort of help me get into that Roku, Boxy, okay. Apple TV world? <laughs> sure. All right. So what I'm going to do is, um, so, uh, so this is the, uh, uh, the, the uh, iOS home screen. Um, in the digital app, we're adding increasing integrations for smart TV platforms. And the first one of these is, 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 the, is the Roku, uh, which has fairly significant traction in the marketplace. So what, what I'm going to show you is the first time user experience for a Roku user. And remember, that's a, this is a connected device. Yeah. And in this case, we don't need an NIR blaster. And because we can uh, integrate with it through IP, uh, the actual user experience is like orders of magnitude better uh, compared to anything you can do through IR. So I'm going to show you. I'm gonna just going to launch the app. Okay. Um, and as soon as you launch the app, we go ahead and we scan your home network. And now, first say, of all, how did you switch the TV over to the Roku? We did that so, earlier. Yeah, oh, we, have, we have an HDMI switch here okay. to simulate uh, various kinds of setups. Okay. But, but if I was watching TV at one point and then mm -hmm. I wanted to go and, and switch to my Roku or my Apple TV, could right. I do that? Yeah, yeah you can. So you, you can absolutely, absolutely do that through the activities feature in the app. So you can say every done here. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's right. So the thing that happened, I think you looked away just for that, that cr cr pivotal second is um, the Roku Media Player, which says new here on the screen. Yeah. That appeared on its own because we discovered it over IP on your Wi-Fi network. You as a user did not have to say, connect to IP address, blah, 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 blah. Right. It's simply, we found it, right. connected to it, and here you go. So, so, so for a Roku owner, this... So for a new Roku, so let's say I've had this for a couple of weeks, and then uh, you tell me, oh, you gotta get the Roku and use it with this. Yeah. Um, I just plug it in and it senses it automatically yes. to the network? Yes, yes. correct. Yeah. Oh, that's so, cool. so, it's, so the configuration is fairly, fairly simple for IR devices. It's, it's like trivial for connected devices. Now I see you have a boxy box here and an Apple TV. Is it true for those devices as well or just the Roku at this uh, point? Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. So Roku okay. is our first. They have a huge user base. They're a great company to work with. And, um, and the product does a lot of things that we thought was a really good integration. We're gonna do some others as well, of course. Um, I, figure, to us, I figure since you have them up there, yeah. you're working on some others. <laughs> <laughs> analysts, uh, analysts, you know, to Fusion Group and a few other analysts will say that there's gonna be 140 million connected devices coming into homes in the next two years. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, you know, we look at the, the Beacon is an amazing product that, I mean, frankly, 100 million homes today could use the Beacon. But as they all buy new devices, we want to give them the best of both worlds, where we use the beacon to bridge from the legacy, and we use the native app to talk to the new. And that's yeah. that's the ultimate consumer experience, as far as we're concerned. Does this do anything special with the Google TV? I think you have a Google TV up there, too. Not now. yet. Not yet. Okay. Right now, Roku's... Roku is a, a moment of publication. Okay. Roku is the one device we digitally That we'll be watching uh, over the next uh, yes. several months, I would guess. It's You're a very important effort it. we have going on. Because you can see there's lots of room. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like when I first saw Google and somebody pointed out, there's lots of room for ads. <laughs> you can even see, by the way, the little Wi-Fi indicator yeah. instead of IR. Uh, that's smart. Okay. Yeah. So you got a brand new Roku, you plugged it in, and all of a sudden it shows up. Right. And, then, and so, and and so then, then you pop into oh. this. There we go. And so, so right off the bat, so the app is free on the App Store. It's available for download today. Uh, right. So if you're, if you're a Roku user and you have an iOS device, you get essentially a free upgrade to, to this guy. Uh, and so, um, as, as, uh, as neat as this may be, uh, doing a bunch of things on the 10-foot UI are fairly uh, painful with this. Yeah. Uh, most kind of, the, the first thing that comes to mind is alphanumeric text entry. So if you want to search for something, you know, navigating the traditional on-screen keyboard yeah. is just such a pain in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I had one. <laughs> yeah, right. And so, right. what we give you is a free upgrade for that. So let's say you want to watch Family Guy. Uh, you can go ahead and punch that in. Oh, that is cool. Now you're typing fairly slow. If I go for faster, your, your video. Yeah. okay. <laughs> you're just making sure people follow along. Yeah. But it keeps up with my. If I am a really fast iPad yeah. typer. Yeah. So, so yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we integrate through IP. So for us, all, it's just a matter of like sending a packet over. Uh, it's, Very cool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, 
That alone sold me, I think, because yeah. uh, e- entering in all these passwords and key, oh, yeah. and all the, your all Wi-Fi stuff. key and stuff like that. Oh man! And uh, you know the Netflix. Yeah. Have you ever gotten that Netflix API key that yeah. you have to enter in? Yeah. It takes you 20 minutes just to type that in with that stupid remote. So yeah, and, yeah. and so most people give up and say, yeah, how would I just want to watch Netflix on this yeah. device? Right? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So actually, that kind of um, if we if we uh, uh, look at the broader smart TV space. Uh, we think that, so that's the reason why Jeremy and I are part of the company. We think that's going to be huge, but a number of things have to happen first before uh, smart TV really gains traction with the mainstream consumers. And the user interface is really one of them. So we think the user, user interface is not quite there. You, it cannot be there on the 10th of UI. It's going to happen on the second screen, and yeah. really that's part of what this company is building. So show me some of the things that we can do with this. So. Um, one of the other areas that I think you'd be interested in, and this is only, um, uh, we don't really have much in the demo ways yet, but we have it in the labs, is uh, when we said earlier that the key components of an entertainment experience, one of, the, one of the starting points is discovery. How do you find new stuff? Yeah. Well, Netflix has a really cool recommendation system. Uh, if you watch a YouTube video, you get kind of related titles. When it comes to TV guides, um, you know, the number one place people find new TV shows is from their peers, yeah. right? So. We built a feature and we'll be shipping it fairly soon where we actually connect to your social graph to make TV guide recommendations for you. You, you hook up to Facebook yep. and Twitter? Yep. Well, Facebook for the first, Facebook for now. Because okay. in Facebook we have a defined order set. In other words, with Twitter, we'd have to figure out that hashtag Glee meant you like the show Glee or, or whatever. With Facebook, if you've liked it, you've liked it. And uh, it's a really, really powerful experience. Um, and then the second half of it is sharing back. So as you use our app, you can tell your friends shows you're watching, whether that's in real time or simply shows you like. You so this is a, similar to, uh, uh, oh, what, uh, what was the app that, that Yahoo bought into now? Um, they're doing where really they interesting had check stuff. into yeah. a TV show, but it's not integrated into all your devices and into your, all your other things. Well, with right? Yahoo, they'll probably integrate it into the whole Yahoo Connected TV platform, which would make a lot of sense. Um, we don't think it makes sense to have experiences that don't start at control. I, I know that we're going to sound like a bit of a broken record, but I think the problem is that discovery and, and even sharing, you know, it's the shiny new object of the week. I mean, let's face it, you know, Google Plus is, is this week's big thing and maybe, you know, Microsoft has their social network in two weeks. I, you know, I don't know. But those are easy to replace features. If you've spent 10 minutes customizing your remote control, or 20 minutes or half an hour, that's the place where you're going to spend most of your time. And so we think whether we're going to partner up with some, some of these types of uh, companies and, and do yeah. conjoined efforts or do it all ourselves is still to be determined. But we think this is the right place for where we can really solve a problem that people will then build from. Now, since we're both friends on Facebook, if you recommend, if you like a show and you get into it, like you get into The Wire or something like that, yeah. what, what happens on my side? Does that, because we're friends, does it, what shows up on my... Oh. So what you'll see in the same program guide that Maxim showed you before, in yeah. the next version you'll see actually your um, what's being recommended to you or what your friends like. Basically, we're, we're, okay. we're just showing you a version of it. What's interesting is in our little bit of testing so far, it's actually really compelling. Yeah. Like People talk about TV all the time, but at the end of the day, if we don't talk enough, how do we know maybe we have 10% TV overlap or maybe we have 90% TV overlap, yeah. right? You know, and you can influence me, right? Because I, I might know your TV is interesting, and if you recommend it. Mine's not. Mine's uh, not. Or yeah. mine's mostly guilty pleasure television. But uh, that's, that's, cause that's, I have, good for that's because I have three young children. I don't have any brain capacity for... <laughs> I can't even watch medical dramas anymore. It's too, yeah. too hard. Um, and if I click on it, it takes me right to the show automatically. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. Uh, where was I going to go with that? Anyways, keep going. <laughs> so that, that's, that's really cool. So, I, and if I like a show, if I if I'm watching a show, do, can I like movies and shows, sure. everything? And we do, will it actually, show up what we'll on your TV guide? guide? So, yes, yeah, so all those kind of things will happen. But you know, we do some cool stuff already. Um, gosh, I don't watch. It is funny doing it midday, uh, showing things instead of. Uh, we need to find something that has regular. But like people Jeopardy, watch. if I like, if you sure. liked Jeopardy. What you can already see our thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay. Well, if you go to see, if you go to get content recommendations, our goal is to be able to give you content recommendations you want. Now, one way to do that is algorithms. That's a lot of work, right? Netflix did the million dollar prize. I mean, it's a lot of work to do good algorithms. And candidly, there's a bunch of things out there. The yeah. second one is purely social. And that's the place where we're going to spend a little bit of our time next. 
we'll do some other stuff down the road, but that's, that's an area where, where we think we can provide value to people right away. Very cool. And where it gets also cool, by the way, is just, um, so not only the upcoming entries of a show, we pull up some other cool little data points. So this is cast, you know, members, cast members. We'll go get their wiki profile. I know where I was going. Okay. So let's say we're both watching Jeopardy at the same time. Yeah. Uh, is there a way for us to chat back and forth or tweet back and forth or anything like that? You know, we have some discussion capabilities. It's, it hasn't been our, our, our yeah. first and foremost feature. My, my personal, again, we're all a little different on these things. I think that the whole real time us watching shows at the same time thing is tricky because if we start at the same moment, there's decent odds one of us is going to pause for either a, a nature break or a snack or something and we get off sync and it's, it's a hard it's problem. true except a few times. A few, Super yes. Bowl? Live sports. Super Bowl for sure. Yeah. Space Oscars. shuttles. Space apparently, shuttles. Apparently space shuttle. Oscars. News yes. events. Yeah. Right. You want to see uh, the tsunami in real time. You don't want to see it an hour later. Right. Or, or if you do see it an hour later, you're not going to be very social about it anyways. You're right. not going to want to talk about it. But, but I agree with you. Live yeah. events, real-time interactions, definitely interesting. I don't know if we have a, we have, I mean, look, we've enabled some of this functionality already, yeah. but I just I think the point is that it's, the it's other still thing is you can, you can still uh, click you know the home button and go to Twitter app or go to your Facebook app and talk sure. that way, right? Absolutely. Because that's where the conversation is happening. Absolutely. I, I just wondered if you were hooking into or thinking of hooking into those as a chat room style thing. We are going to hook into pulling in feeds. Okay. Um, we have a couple of fun ideas for some things we're going to do a little different than I think we've seen before. At the end of the day, you've got a powerful Twitter client. You've got a powerful Facebook client. We're not going to try to supplant that. That would be a waste of, of effort. Yeah. But we can do some stuff that I don't think people really thought of in the context of, if we know you can control your devices with us, how are those feeds becoming more relevant and interesting yeah. in the context of, of a device like this? Is there any way for me, uh, it, uh, here's a, a, a thing that happened to me. I was, I was doing something else. And Tiger Woods hit a really amazing shot in the, uh, I think, in the Masters. And my Twitter network lit up. It just went crazy because everybody was watching golf that weekend for some reason. And everybody was like, oh, my God, what a shot. And that signaled to me to turn on my TV. Of course, it was too late for me to catch it. But, you know, we found things on YouTube and other places. Is there a way for you to say, hey, something's happening right now that's really white hot that everybody's recommending you, you actually check out? Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, actually, so as as part of um, us providing you this kind of next generation uh, guide for t television, uh, we're collecting a whole lot of real time uh, stats and usage information on what's being, what kind of content is being consumed, what's kind of buzzworthy in your social graph, uh, what's being watched in your geographic area, and so uh, that kind of data. We have a lot of interesting ideas about how to highlight that within the app. Uh, and so that's one of the things you will see come from us. Very cool. All right. Well, I'm running out of batteries on this thing. On this thing. So, um, any last last thing that we should talk about in this in this product? Because it's just amazing. I, I want to go home and try it. Yeah. Well, now we're gonna get you one. Um, keep an eye out for our iPad and Android support coming this summer. Yeah. And um, look, we're loving all the feedback we're getting from users already. It, it's you know it's fun to be out there and have real people downloading and using your app and, and can you buy this in the Apple stores worldwide or just in the United States right now it's the United States Canada too or the United States Canada, also. Canada also. Don't, yeah. okay but does exactly. it work overseas or just in the United States and Canada uh, we don't provide the guide the guide for uh, any overseas uh, provider okay. uh, but the app the app does work and it does kind of the, the remote uh, control part of the app uh, works very cool and where do I learn more about it uh, Digit.com, that's D-I-J-I-T.com. And are you guys on Facebook and Twitter as well? Uh, we are. So, so. we have a, a, a Digit Facebook page, and our, and our Twitter account name is uh, Digit.com, uh, spelled out. Okay. We're going we're to try to shorten that one as soon as we can. Very cool. All right. And what, by the way, what are your personal Twitter accounts? At J Toman, J-T-O-E-M-A-N. Cool. And mine is uh, Maxim underscore Yofi, that's M-A-K-S-I-M underscore I-O-F-F-E. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. That's, that's I'll a, link to <laughs> you can put that you can in just the comment them. <laughs> yeah, you can comment them on the YouTube uh, oh, comment area. Sure. Well, thank you so much. This is really cool, and I'm I'm looking forward to trying out. Thanks, Thanks Robert. Thanks. Yes, we should start with a short. So, no, no, no. <laughs> Hi, Robert. Hi, Internet. Knowing Robert as well as I do, even this part's going online. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me turn it on. Oh, I just. Have to...